Hello, sir. How are you doing tonight? I saw you stretch it out a little bit. Yeah, man. I've, I've been going through a lot of these uh, conversations here, but you you have probably the best setup I've seen thus far. You look like you do this. So oh my God. I applaud you for that. I'm touched. You have my jury vote now. <laughs> <laughs> That, that means the world to me tonight, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I want to ask, like, how are, how are you doing? It's got to be such a mix of emotions, right? You're out of the house. You made it to the final two. You do end up losing out on, on the money. Uh, so what's going through your mind right now? I mean, for me, Mike, to be honest with you, initially I was a bit confused, a bit um, surprised by the way the jury votes uh, ended up landing. But after hearing Taylor's speech and the way that she communicated her story throughout her time in the Big Brother house, I was not surprised that they resonated with that, you know, and I'm not surprised that anybody who was watching would have resonated with wanting Taylor to win, given um, how effectively she communicated her story. So um, in my mind, of course, I'm going to look at myself and say, could I have done anything differently as far as my game goes to make sure that I was in the best position to win? I can't think of anything at the moment. And I've, I've heard different conversations around whether choosing Turner would have been better, but with the information I had, I think I did the best job that I could. And I'm, I'm happy to lose to the, the first African-American woman to, to win big brother. That, that to me, I can, I'm, I'm glad to be a part of it. Are there any votes that you were most surprised by did not go your way for whatever reason? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. So we'll start off with Terrence for sure. He's somebody that always talked about how important it was to make big moves and me evicting Turner at the end, I thought would solidify that vote. Kyle, uh, we have been close and worked together all throughout the season. And um, especially with our alliance in the pound, which then started the leftovers, I thought he would resonate with my game, especially how logical he is around how to play the game of Big Brother. Joseph, for sure, was a huge surprise for me. Uh, I thought that in his mind, or I thought from our conversations where he told me <laughs> specifically that if he wasn't going to win, he would want to see me win. Um, and that was unprompted. That was something that he just told me outright very early in the season. So I thought I could surely count on his vote. And then uh, Indy was a little bit of a surprise too. But again, with uh, with the, the powerful uh, sentiments around the vote and what it could mean for women in this game, I think it makes sense that she did vote that way. Um, even Michael, to an extent, was a little bit of a surprise. But but yeah, those were the votes I was surprised about. Yeah, so let's talk about, you know, re your relationship with Taylor in general. Roller coaster would be describing it mildly. Uh, because, <laughs> yeah, you know, right. you, you start off definitely uh, being the ones to lead the charge against her due to this uh, whole, you know, misunderstanding slash misleading going on with Paloma. Things grow closer. You grow closer. Things break apart near <laughs> the end. You make yeah. some for lack of a better term, not so nice comments about her not being a good representative for, for Black women. You call her cold-hearted. Uh, you imply there was a reason why Daniel and Paloma and Nicole went after her. You called her inconsiderate and you were giving her comments about the way that she should be behaving. And then you end up taking her to the final two. It's a very complicated dynamic, but I'd love you to give me your thoughts on how this relationship changed over the course of the game and especially the way you were thinking and talking about her, perhaps without her knowing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, well, first and foremost, uh, I think being in that house and playing the game can definitely have an impact on my thoughts, what I communicate to folks who I'm talking to, uh, the amount of stress and the amount of um, mental <laughs> instability at times could be a huge factor into what I've said. And I want to apologize for anything that has come across or that was um, offensive or, or anything that was negative towards Taylor. So I just want to say that outright. Um, but as far as our relationship goes, yes, it has been a roller coaster. I was operating based off of information that I had at that time during that first week. And everything that I had at that moment would lead me to believe that her intentions were not in the right place in that communication that she, she shared with me about Paloma. I was clearly wrong. Even after all of that stuff went down, I think it might have been a few weeks ago, Taylor and I had a conversation about, you know, what Paloma told her right after she had been put up as a replacement nominee, which opened my eyes. I was like, oh, my God, like this. She she was outed from the beginning. You know, she was outed from day one, like even without people knowing about her, they were already saying that they didn't want to work with her, even as a girl's alliance. Right. So 
to me, that that definitely changed my perspective. Um, and as of as you know, for the things that have happened recently and, and things that I may have said recently, again, I've I've expressed how I felt in those moments. And if I said anything that came across uh, the wrong way or that was offensive, I apologize. And, you know, in the heat of those moments, being in a very stressful environment, there could be times where, you, you know, you slip up and, and perhaps I did. And I don't remember <laughs> those times. So um, you saying it now is definitely, um, you know, something that I'm going to need to reflect on. So, yeah. So you you had mentioned at the end that you know you you want the the person who won to play it an honest and loyal game and that's something that you touted in your speech as well. So how do you look back on, on your own game? Do you feel like you were able to satisfy that, even though it doesn't end up netting you the check? How do you look back on those eighty two days that you were able to play in the house? Uh, I'm proud of the way I played the game. Uh, I, I look back at my game and. I felt like I was as loyal as I possibly could be and as transparent as I possibly could be to the people I was aligned with. Um, I felt as though if anything were to change on that front, it was based off of information that was clearly opposing the trust that I may have established with those people. So to me, I, I felt really good about how I played this game, even in deciding to take you know, Taylor over Turner. I mean, I there were two instances where I could have evicted Turner. I could have put him in a position to be evicted the week prior and the week before that one. So I felt as though, you know, there were plenty of opportunities where I could have taken that shot, but I didn't because I wanted to see him go as far as possible um, until I felt like it may have jeopardized my chances of winning 750K. So um, that's how I feel about my game. Um, you know, I definitely had some things where maybe I would have tried to address them differently with people outside of my alliance. But whoever I was aligned to, I truly felt like, you know, they had my game in their hands. So amazing. Well, Monty, I know that obviously you're facing a lot at the moment. And I know it, it was far from, you know, the best big night for you, but still a big night. Nonetheless, I mean, you, you won the final HOH. You, you got the runner up money. That is certainly nothing to sneeze at. And I do want to commend you for, you know, a hard fought 82 days. I know they were far from easy. I know that you also faced a lot of really serious conversations in there as well that certainly blended the game and personal to what you were you were talking about before i'm glad you're able to look back on some of the things maybe that have gone on that you've said and and reflect as well because you know the journey does not end uh once you leave those doors and so i just want to commend you for you know sitting down and having the the head to you know talk with me through a very busy very tough night but also uh willing to have an open mind about things as well no i appreciate it mike it means a lot coming from you and um like i said i'm i'm a Honest man, I own up to my mistakes. If I've ever done anything wrong or ever ever hurt anybody, I operate in a frequency of love, man. So I don't I don't ever want to be a part of that. And if I can apologize and make amends, I would love to. So yeah.